Okay, so we have a lot of Batman vs. Superman or Man of Steel 2 prequel Justice League and Justice League movie. Yes, they have finally decided that they're going to try to film Superman, Batman, or Superman vs. Batman or Man of Steel 2 back to back with Justice League. So there's going to be a lot more cameos in this. So we'll go first and foremost with some of the additional Batman vs. Superman stuff. Jeremy Irons as Alfred. I like that. And that's going to be good. If we notice one thing from the previous set of Batman movies, not the Nolan verse, the pre Nolan verse Batman, if you have a good Alfred, that can make for some decent scenes. I think Jeremy Irons will do a fantastic job as Alfred. Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Initially, I was like, that sounds pretty good. If you've seen scenes from, uh, Charlie drawing a blank newborn brain. Uh, <clears throat> he did great in the social network. You know, he really did show that he could be the most intelligent person in the room and kind of be a bit of a prick to it. Which in my mind, I've, of, I've often read Lex Luthor as being, I'm the smartest guy in the room. I know I'm the smartest guy, but everyone else in here is an idiot. He's always had that level of arrogance. He did a good job of that in the social network. Also as well as a uh, I don't know, it wasn't Catch Me If You Can, it's more where he was with a bunch of magicians. Again, played this very sort of dry, sarcastic, arrogant individual. It made a lot of sense. I was like, I could kind of see that working. But then a rumor came out that apparently what they're going to try to do is Lex Luthor will have had a mild street gang upbringing and then it become such a, a tech genius multi-billionaire in like his late teen years. So they kind of took Tupac and like Mark Zuckerberg and tried to like combine the two and put that into the visage of Jesse Eisenberg. That way you have the idea of the more self-made billionaire and Lex Luthor, which will allow him to kind of look down upon Bruce Wayne's character, meaning he's a trust fund baby. If done well, that could be an interesting dynamic. If done poorly, that is a boo-hoo! That is a train wreck of epic proportions. And now we're going to one of the Justice League portions. Um, the Rock has again mentioned that he's going to be in the Justice League movie. And sorry people, he's not going to be Black Adam. He's now heavily mentioned the fact that he's going to be the John Stewart Green Lantern. Which is going to be a great job of confusing lots of people who know nothing of Green Lantern. There are people who know Green Lantern from the cartoon who go, oh, well, he's black. Then Ryan Reynolds does a movie. Well, why is he white? Then the information came out, oh, Green Lantern's gay. But Ryan Reynolds didn't play a gay character. Now it was like, well, how is Green Lantern a black guy now? People don't know the term Green Lantern is a title that refers to currently somewhere in the neighborhood of up to 7,201 characters. And there's, there's a lot of characters who use the title Green Lantern. But, you know, comics are so simple that some adults can't understand the fact there's multiple people named Green Lantern. So, Jeremy Irons makes sense. The Jesse Eisenberg thing I was hopeful until they, the rumor came about him having potential, like, almost gang upbringing in, like, his formative teenage years, which led him to being a much more ruthless businessman. Depending on how they work that in, they work that in as, like, thug, or, or is it pseudo-thug Lex Luthor in, the, in Jesse Eisenberg, that's just gonna seem weird. You want him to be arrogant. You want him to be someone who's boastful. You know, he's someone who's like, you know, I'm the smartest guy in the room. I know it. You know it. Just deal with it. You want to go from that style. You don't want to have it be, I'm the smartest guy in the room. Uh. If he comes off at all whiny, then that whole, you know, tough kid from the streets, yo. It's just, it's not going to play. It's going to be absolutely horrible. And then the fact you're going to go from that, with all the characters you have involved that go right into a Justice League movie. Any mistake you make 
in Man of Steel 2, or Batman, Superman, Superman vs. Batman, whatever they decide to call it, any mistakes you make in that translate directly into a Justice League movie. And there's enough things going on that make absolutely no sense, currently. And then it's how are they going to end Superman Batman, the right Justice League movie. There have, of course, been talks that they're going to do Doomsday. Ironically, when I first started doing videos, I did mention a Doomsday sort of scenario. You could have Doomsday show up, but then you very easily begin with your Death of Superman storyline to begin with. Whatever they do, do not end Superman and Batman with the Death of Superman. There'd be way too much to try to get in. You just have to establish Batman, Wonder Woman, a handful of other characters, Lex Luthor, Doomsday. You know, three characters is enough to try to establish. Once you get beyond that, your film's just your film is way too difficult because people get bits and pieces. If they do that, then you try to do your just the movie that's Superman dying, other characters coming together, forming a league. And if you do it like the Avengers, it made sense because everyone had an individual film. Instead you try to bring together a bunch of characters who just seem like interchangeable parts. And then have them fight a monster, do a decent job, have Superman come back and finish off Doomsday. Could be an interesting movie, if done well. So far we've had Man of Steel and Green Lantern. Green Lantern, they tried to do way too much, and it was a train wreck. Man of Steel, actually pretty good. But it means they have a 50% chance of making their next two movies potentially either good and decent, you know, and very memorable movies, or doing way too much and being absolutely horrible. 